Hi everyone and welcome to the Australian Reptile Park and welcome back to another live stream. My name's Jake and uh, I've got Zach with me here today as well. And uh, we're pretty excited because today we are bringing uh, to you at home some snakes and not just any old snakes, some highly venomous snakes. And in fact, we are going to uh, milk two venomous snakes for you here this afternoon. Very exciting stuff. Now, I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna get one straight out. I'm gonna sit it on the floor here. I might even hold on to it. And then I'll tell you a little bit about the snakes we're gonna milk, and then we're gonna get into the action. So we've got the first snake in this brown bag here. And as most people are familiar with, Australia has some incredibly venomous snake species. And this one here is certainly no exception. In fact, this first snake we're gonna have a look at, and he's gonna make his way out on his own. This is the fourth most venomous snake found anywhere in the world. This is the tiger snake, a very iconic, quite well-known Australian venomous snake. Maybe he's not gonna make his way out on his own. He's trying to hide away. I'm gonna grab him out. Now the tiger snake, as I mentioned, an incredibly dangerous snake. And these were actually our leading cause of snake bite and snake bite fatality in Australia for a very long time. And that is because they were quite a common snake and uh, they did contribute to quite a number of bites, particularly going back 100, 120 years. Now, uh, the tiger snake, they do have a fairly large range within Australia. They are found in Queensland, but only in the extreme southeastern portion of the state. And then they're found uh, right throughout southeastern New South Wales. You do get them locally here on the central coast. You can find tiger snakes uh, even within the grounds here uh, at the Reptile Park. You get them down in Victoria, very common. In South Australia, in WA, again, a very common snake in the swamps around Perth. And then they are also found down in Tasmania. In fact, the tiger snake is one of only three snake species found in Tasmania. The other two being the copperhead, another fairly large, highly venomous snake, and then the smaller white-lipped snake. Now the tiger snake is primarily feeding on frogs. Where you find tiger snakes is typically in association, in association with water, waterways, swamps, lakes. They love to feed on frogs. Now they're of course killing those frogs with their, with their incredibly toxic venom. It's very dangerous to frogs and it is very dangerous to people. And if you were to be bitten by this snake, you would certainly require anti-venom if it were a severe envenomation. And the process of producing that anti-venom starts right here at the reptile park with the venom extraction or the milking of the snakes. And how about we get straight into that right now. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of our hook and I'm actually going to restrain the snake just on this nice soft pad here. Now this does not hurt the snake, but what it does is enables me to get a nice safe firm grip just behind the back of his head there, just like that. Now at this point, the snake likely wants to bite something, ideally me, I'm sure he's thinking, but uh, instead what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our little shot glass here, little piece of plastic film stretched across the opening. We don't want him to bite his own tail, so we'll wait for that to move out of the way there. And now we will introduce the snake to that vial. And just like that, those fangs have pierced that plastic there and venom has started to collect just at the bottom of the vial there. Now it doesn't look like much, and it's not much, it's just a couple of drops. I think we've got two or three drops there, um, but that is more than sufficient to kill quite a number of adult people. They are an incredibly toxic snake. Now I might stand up so we can get a bit better view of the entire body there. And uh, what we do with this venom is we'll remove it from the little glass here and then we can pile it all together and we will send it down to Melbourne to a place called Securus. And there the process of the anti-venom uh, development begins. What they'll do with our venom is they will inject a small amount of it into a horse. Now don't worry if you love your horses, it doesn't hurt the horse, but what it does is uh, begins the process of antibody development within that horse. Slowly but surely that horse will begin to produce more and more antibodies to the venom as the dose of venom that's being injected is increased. Now at the end of maybe eight, nine months, some blood is drawn from that horse, quite a large amount of blood, and they will separate that blood out into its various properties. The part that they want is the plasma, that's the good part, that contains those now venom resistant antibodies. Those antibodies are then processed, purified and turned 
into the anti-venom itself. So it is quite a long lengthy process, but it does all start right here at the reptile park with the milking of the snakes. And as I mentioned before, it doesn't look like much and it's not, but uh, that right there is not gonna go to waste. That is very valuable venom and that will contribute to a vial of tiger snake anti-venom being produced and eventually a life being saved. Now I'm gonna pop that just about down there. And if we look very carefully inside the mouth, the snake's still got the mouth slightly ajar. So you may even see the fangs right there. Our Australian fangs, sorry, our Australian snakes have extremely short fangs, just a few millimeters in length. But typically that's just enough to get just below the surface of the skin. They'll inject that venom and then you would be in a lot of trouble if you were bitten uh, by a tiger snake, particularly one this size. Now I'm going to pop this tiger snake back into the bag. I'm going to let his head go very carefully, just like that. He can go back in there. I'm going to twist this bag up nice and tight so we don't have any escapees. And I'm just going to pop it just over here. We'll get him out of the way because we've got one more snake to have a look at. Now the tiger snake, they're a very dangerous snake, but a really big one might get to five maybe six feet, feet long. The snake we're about to have a look at can exceed eight feet in length. In fact, they are our largest venomous snake in this country. This, the snake Zach's about to extract some venom from, is known as the mulga snake or the king brown snake. Now, like I mentioned before, the tiger snake has a fairly large range within this country. The mulga snake, even greater. It's found in five states in Australia, those being New South Wales, Queensland, the Northern Territory, South Australia and WA, and they are an incredibly dangerous snake. Their venom drop for drop isn't quite as toxic as the tiger snake, but in saying that, what we're about to see is an enormous quantity of venom. They more than make up for it with the amount that they inject in a single bite. Now this snake's actually so strong and so powerful that I'm gonna control the back end of the snake for Zach. You can see that snake's already swinging its jaws around. It wants to bite something. And what it is going to do is bite that vial there. And there we've got a little bit of venom there. It's a little more obvious than the, uh, the tiger snake. And uh, yeah, that is a good amount of venom. That would certainly uh, put you in a bad way if that were underneath your skin and in your system. <laughs> and as you can see, king brown snakes uh, they're like the bulldog of the venomous snake world. When they bite something, they hold on and uh, they do not like to let go on their own accord. So you can see Zach's really applying very minimal pressure behind the back of the head there. And um, even so, that snake is not letting go of that vial. It's got its fangs through the plastic. In fact, we're still getting a couple of additional drops of venom coming down into that vial. But as you saw, most of that venom was in that initial bite, that initial great shot of venom at the start and now we're just getting a few drops uh, here and there but he's pretty much done he's just holding on to this vial I think to uh, send Zach a bit of a message <laughs> this is what I would do to your hand if uh, you messed up now Zach's gonna do his best to try and pry the snake off like that and now we can get a nice close look at that vial very rich dark yellow venom and as I mentioned a lot of it these do produce more venom than any other Australian snake. Now, uh, whilst we're here talking about venom and talking about venomous snakes, and whilst Zach pops this big King Brown back into the bag, and we can watch him do that, I'm just gonna start to talk a little bit about first aid, what you would do if you were to be bitten by a snake like this mulga snake. Now, what the first thing you need to do, and I know it sounds ridiculous, you cannot panic. Snake venom, it's injected into the lymphatic fluid just below the surface of the skin. I think that snake wants to go for round two, right at the top of that bag. Got to be careful of that. As I was saying, venom is injected just below the surface of the skin. And the more that you panic, the more you move around, uh, the more you carry on, the faster that venom is going to spread throughout your system. Now, uh, the first thing you want to do is apply a bandage. Now, here in Australia, it's very simple. That is the method of first aid for every single 
snake species. There's nothing different about it. If you are bitten by a snake, you apply a firm pressure bandage or compression bandage to the limb that you've been bitten on. If I were to be bitten on the finger here, I would wrap around the bite site two or three times. You would then extend the bandage right to the top of the limb, immobilize that limb, immobilize the victim and get them off to hospital as quickly as you possibly can. As we saw here today, venom from a tiger snake, venom from a mulga snake or a king brown, it's nothing to muck around with. If that were in your system, you would be in a very, very bad way very quickly and uh, you do absolutely need to seek out medical attention. Now guys, I hope you enjoyed that quick glimpse uh, into us milking some snakes. And this is something we do uh, a lot here at the Reptile Park. In fact, we are the sole supplier of terrestrial snake venom for the production of anti-venom. But we're not quite done yet. We're still gonna answer a couple of questions and I've got a few things to talk about just at the end. So Amanda, we might uh, get some venom snake questions happening. Yeah, a lot of people are asking about the venom that the snakes have. So the two snakes that you've just had, that, like just milked then, do they still have venom in their, I guess, in their venom glands? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when we had the snake behind the head, you would have seen just behind the eye, those large, uh, I guess, soft cushiony parts of the head. That's the venom glands. That's where the venom is stored within the head. And when we're milking a snake, most of them are only giving us maybe 20 or 30% of what they are truly capable of injecting. So even though we've just milked these two snakes, they are still more than capable, capable of delivering uh, quite a number of uh, bites additional to that that would be extremely dangerous. So we get a small amount and they are no, by no means uh, harmless or dry after they've been milked. Uh, so you milked two different kinds of snake then. Do you mil milk all kinds of venomous snakes here at the Reptile Park? Yeah, so what we saw today was two of the species that we milk here, but we actually milk five in total. So in addition to the tiger snake and the king brown snake, as we just saw, uh, we'll also milk the coastal taipan, easily the most dangerous snake we deal with here, uh, as well as the death adder and the eastern brown snake. And collectively, those five snake species, uh, their venoms will produce uh, the Australian snake antivenoms. What snake scares you the most? This is a question for Zach and you, Jake. <laughs> I think it might be might be a similar answer. Uh, easily the coastal taipan. They are a very large, very dangerous snake. They get right up there in terms of size with the king brown snakes. Not quite as uh, thick. They're a little more slender, but they are a very, very dangerous snake. I'll hand over yeah, to Zach. I hundred percent agree response. with Jakey there, uh, and in particular one named Whitey. Um, he's got a couple of names we can't say, but uh, Whitey's kind of a go-to, and it, he's just a bad bit of gear. So uh, a few people have asked this question as well. Do the snakes get hurt in the process of milking? No, they certainly don't. So um, whilst it might be a tiny little bit uh, stressful on the snake going through that process, of course, we're, we are restraining them behind the back of the head and we are um, getting them to bite onto something. It's not a natural thing for the snake, but this is something we only do once every two weeks with every snake. So it's not like the snakes are having this done every single day. It's only once a fortnight. And it's over very, very quickly, as you saw. Whilst I was talking a little bit here today, I probably held the snake onto the vial uh, a little bit longer than I typically would. If we're milking upstairs and we're going through a whole group of snakes, they're on and off the vial and back into the, the enclosure uh, very quickly. So it's a very quick um, thing for the snake and it's not stressful um, really long term. And uh, yeah, we can do it. Um, even though you life. explained it uh, during the tiger snake milking, a couple of people joined a little bit later. Can you just explain how you turn the venom into anti-venom? Yes, what we will do with this venom that we extracted, we'll send it down to Victoria to a place called Securus, and that's where the process begins. They will take our venom that we supply and they will inject it into a really large horse. Now, the reason they use horses is they're large, as I mentioned, and they've got a lot of blood. Now, they'll start with a tiny, tiny dose. They'll inject that into the horse and then they will uh, basically allow the horse to produce antibodies. Those antibodies are extracted and those antibodies are actually what are um, essentially the antivenom at the end of the day. It's a byproduct of that horse's immune system. So it's a really interesting way that it works. And I think we'll wrap it up there, Jake. Yeah, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed that. Um, as I mentioned, we work with uh, venomous snakes here at the park. We extract their venom. It's a big part of uh, what we do, particularly what Zach does each and every day. We'd like to thank you for joining us. But before we go, I do have a few things to mention. I'm sure um, some of you might be wondering, how can you still assist the Reptile Park and help us out while we are closed to the public and while you guys are stuck at home? We do actually have a really fantastic activity book um, that you can get on our website. 
and uh, that's a really great way to uh, of course keep the kids entertained uh, during this time and then uh, we've actually got a really great promotion uh, campaign running as well um, in which you can use your Discover vouchers, your Service New South Wales Discover vouchers. If you head to the Reptile Park website, you'll be able to see the way in which you can use your Discover voucher um, and actually donate it to help kids in need. If you get that um, and you donate it, then you can receive a $25 uh, discount. And uh, yeah, it's a fantastic cause at the same time. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will be continuing these live streams um, right throughout the weekdays. Thank you, and uh, we will see you next time.